In the previous episode, I showed you how to obtain sensitivity information uh, in the form of sensitivity report from Excel or from Gurobi when you uh, access Gurobi using Python uh, language. In this uh, video, this is the first video where I will show you how to use this information, what can we learn from it. Um, so we're going to focus first on uh, the first part of Excel uh, sensitivity report or the Gurobi report, which deals with uh, sensitivity related to the objective. Uh, so here you see in Excel we are given um, name, uh, for each variable, which uh, are x1, x2, we're given final values. This is quite trivial. This is just a solution information. We're given something called reduced cost, for which we are now going for, for the time being, going to ignore. And we're given something that uh, is, is highlighted here with these red frames, uh, which is about co objective coefficient and something called allowable increase and decrease. And in the corresponding information in Gurobi would be, again, you have variables and their values, and then you have the same objective coefficients, 350 and 300. And then instead of allowable increase and decrease, we are given some kind of low and upper, lower and upper limit for a certain range. So sensitivity analysis here, we will be focusing on the objective, which you see here, right? And the notice that I will always keep here this uh, whole model um, that uh, we're, uh, we're analyzing, uh, right? The product mix problem, where we're producing two products, Aqua Spy, Handrelux, maximizing profit and trying to uh, limit the use of certain three resources. Uh, and again, just for for uh, for ease of access, I will keep here the optimal solution that was originally obtained, which is 122 um, aqua spas and 78 hydroluxes should be produced, let's say per week, in order to maximize profit and the profit that is achieved by this solution when you plug in, right, the stars will be used to indicate optimal values of variables. So when you plug in in this objective, when you plug in this optimal solution, you obtain a total profit of 66,100 per week. And uh, so that means that um, this, th since this is opt an optimal solution, this is the maximum value achievable. So first of all, uh, let's understand uh, first that this information that you see in Excel or in Gurobi is actually the same information, just in a slightly different format. It basically shows us something called range of optimality for, for each objective coefficient, right? for each objective. So for every variable, x1, x2, we have an objective coefficient 350 and 300 that you see here, right? Uh, and also here and, and the same thing here. Um, so this, uh, for each objective coefficient, we are given a range of optimality. A range of optimality is just a range of values, right? So for this 350, we're given a range of values which includes 350. It's from 300 to 450. Right? And it's also defined here, but slightly differently. Here it is defined as 350 plus, right? the upper limit is plus the allowable increase. So maximum you can increase it by 100, right? So it actually is 450, the upper limit that you see here directly is, can be obtained as 350 plus 100. And 350 minus allowable decrease is the lower limit, right? So you see 350 minus 50 is 300, and you see here, this as a lower limit. By the way, SA stands for sensitivity analysis in Gurobi. All sensitivity analysis information is given with attributes starting with SA. So this is SA for the objective coefficient, lower limit for the range of optimality, and upper limit for the range of optimality. So I hope you see, right, that range of optimality from Excel, you can calculate it using this, this formula. Uh, so you can calculate it as objective coefficient minus allowable decrease, objective coefficient plus allowable increase. And in, in uh, Gurobi, the range is given directly using the lower and upper limit, as you see here. So it's for first coefficient is this. For the second coefficient, you can see that, again, adding 50 or subtracting 66.67 will give us this, of course, different uh, uh, level of rounding. Right? So what is the usefulness of this range of optimality? Well, it helps us answer certain questions. Generally, sensitivity analysis is uh, trying to answer questions, what if uh, the numbers that we assumed here in the model, in this whole model, what if those numbers, right, 350, 300, 1, 1, 9, and so on, 6, 12, these right-hand sides. What if they are wrong? What if they are off by something, right? Maybe it's not 350, it's 360 or 320. 
right? Profit may be, it's not really uh, going to be realized. Uh, the realized profit will not be 350 per unit. Maybe it will be smaller, maybe it will be larger. Maybe we will not have exactly 200 pumps. Maybe we'll have more or less pumps per week or labor hours. Maybe someone will be absent. So generally, we're trying to answer questions about what if these numbers are, are, are wrong, uh, a little wrong or a lot wrong, right? So um, the, obviously, the easiest thing to do is always to say, well, if it's not 350 but 340, let me just put 340 here, put it this, update this model in Excel or Gurobi, and just solve it and see what the new solution is, right? Or change other numbers and again resolve. But that's a lot of work and that doesn't give us a lot of information, right? We could generate a, a, a large number of variants of this model with slightly different parameters and we wouldn't learn much. Sensitivity analysis gives us a lot of information in a very concise way and this range of optimality is such a way. So what does, it, what does range of optimality mean? Well, here is the, the sentence that defines uh, in a very concise way the meaning. So if one objective coefficient changes, let's say the first coefficient, 350, changes within the range of optimality, so within this 300 or uh, up to 450, and all other coefficients in the model remain the same, right? so we're changing one at a time, then the old optimal solution will still be optimal. So what does it tell us? It tells us something like, if I change this 350 to 360, but 360 is still below, right, 450, right? It's an increase by 10, and you can see the allowable increase is by 100, so it's still below allow or no more than allowable increase. Then I know if I were to resolve this model, I would still get the same optimal solution, 122 and 78. Or if I were to change the second coefficient, let's say if I were to take this 300, and I were to decrease it, let's say, to 250. Maybe the product is not achieving as high a profit as we expected. Maybe we had to lower the price, give some discounts. Maybe the costs of resources were actually higher and we had to increase the salaries of our workers. And actually, the profit is not 300, it's 250. Well, it is still within the range. And so if we change just this number, not, not any other numbers, just this number to 250, right, in the model here, 250, and solve this model again in Excel or Gurobi, we are going to get uh, the same optimal solution, right? So that's sensitivity, and obviously, uh, clearly, if this range is very narrow, right? If this was, for example, from 295 to 305, this would be very, this model would be very sensitive to the change of this coefficient. If this range is very wide, let's say if it was just from 100 to, to 1000, then we would say the model is not very highly insensitive to this, to this parameter, right? So we have this information. We will also later on consider um, something called 100% rule. When we change multiple objective coefficients, we can also sometimes say uh, whether the optimal solution will remain the same or not. And the important thing is we will also uh, be able to, to find out the new optimal objective function value, right? So if I, let's say, increase this to 360, right? And I know it is still within the range of optimality. I know this solution will stay the same. But uh, what I'm interested also in is how much will be the profit. And given that I increase this, obviously the profit must be changing even if the solution is the same. So we will, you will see in, an, in the f ex examples that follow that um, we can actually calculate the new optimal objective function value, in this case, the new total profit, whenever we know that the solution, the optimal solution, the old optimal solution remains still optimal. And uh, we will also, uh, even if, if we exceed the range, even if we go beyond the range of optimality, right, so increase one of the coefficients above the limit or below the lower limit, um, then we will also be able to say something uh, um, about the profit, actually, we will be able to calculate a lower bound on the optimal objective function value. Uh, so we will be able to tell what's the smallest profit we will find when we resolve this problem after the optimal solution possibly changes, right? This is the case. Lower bound can always be found when the objective is maximization. And if it was minimization, we would always be able to find an upper bound, right? So this is sometimes a useful information. Okay, so what kind of questions uh, can we ask? Here is a question. 
What if objective coefficient for aqua spa increases to 360, or in other words, increases by 10? So what we're talking here about is actually the profit contribution for aqua spa, which is here in the model. It's 350, right? Every increase in the production level of aqua spas contributes $350 to the profit. So the question here is just saying, what if this was 360, right? Or the increase here is by 10. So first thing to, to, that we have to recognize is that um, 360 is within the range of optimality, right? The range of optimality, which is, which is given here, 300 to 450. 300 to 450, 360 is still inside this range. So increased it, we increased it, but not, uh, not that much, right? So uh, alternatively, we could say the increase by 10 is smaller or equal allowable increase. Um, so... Right, so we're saying that allowable increase, which is here in the Excel report for the first variable allowable increase is 100, right? Even if it was at the limit, even if I increase this 360 up to 450, or the increase would be by 100, which is exactly equal to 100, we would still be within the range of optimality, right? So if we know this, we can say, right, so the old optimal solution will still be optimal, right? This is what we know, the, the meaning of the range of optimality uh, guarantees that, right? Now, given that the old optimal solution, right, which is this, this value, which is still optimal, we can calculate the new optimal objective function value, right? So the new optimal objective function value will be calculated as before, but with one difference. There is a new coefficient. The 350 has just changed to 360, right? So this coefficient is no longer 350, it's 360. But the solution is still 122.78, right? So now I have to plug these numbers, right? Plug um, the 122.78 here in the new function, and I will get profit, which is now 67,320, right? And alternatively, the, uh, alternatively uh, what we could say is, right, what has changed here? Really, this was 350, now it's 360. So the increase is by 10 times whatever value of x1. So I could say uh, that, uh, that optimal objective function value uh, increased, right? Or increases by, by, not 360, by 10 times x1, which is 1,220, right? So we can conclude this just based on the sensitivity analysis. And I hope you see if I were to increase this by uh, 20, 30, whatever, up to 100, the same logic can be applied. The optimal solution doesn't change, and we can conclude what the new optimal profit will be, right? What's important is that if you're uh, using this production plan, uh, let's say someone on the production floor is actually producing 122 aquaspas and 78 hydroluxes every week, um, even if the profit is different now, uh, they are still doing the best thing possible. They are still producing what's something that is giving us maximum profit. Just now it is actually a higher profit in this case. Here is another question. What if objective coefficient again for aqua spa decreases to 330? So before we considered an increase, now we're considering a decrease, right? 330 before it was 350. So that's a decrease by 20, right? Again, we can say that 330, this new value uh, of the coefficient, is still within the range of optimality 300 to 450, right? Or alternatively, we can say, we can say that decrease 
by 20 is less than or equal, right? It's not exceeding the allowable decrease that is equal to 50, right, that we see here in the Excel report, right? Which is, the, of course, the difference between 350 and 300, right? So what do we know from this? So the old optimal solution will still be optimal, right? And then, again, as before, I can say, well, given that this old optimal solution, this is still optimal, we can calculate, uh, right, the new optimal objective function value, right, we can calculate the new optimal objective function value, but of course we have to first change the coefficient from 350 to 330, right, and recalculate, plugging in the same optimal solution as before, Right, so that will give us this time the decrease 63,660. Right, or again, alternatively, we can say, well, what has changed in this function is that this first coefficient, which was 350 before, now has decreased to 330, so they decreased by 20. So we can say that optimal objective function value. Uh, decreases, right, by, by what? By 20 times x1, which is 2,440, right? So uh, this is what we can conclude based on sensitivity analysis information. And again, um, what's important is that if this profit that we assumed originally is not accurate. It's actually smaller than we thought. Maybe that's because we have to give discounts or we have some additional costs we forgot to uh, consider. Even if it drops to 330, the optimal solution is still 120 to 78. So what we're doing, let's say, if you are applying this plan and actually producing this many units, we are still maximizing the profit. The only thing is that the profit is not 66,100. The maximum profit that really is possible to achieve is, is, is $2,440 lower, right? It's 63,660. So uh, I hope you, uh, I will not show you more examples um, that are within the uh, range of optimality, right? We consider two examples within the range of optimality, an increase and a decrease, right? And I notice that whenever I, uh, in the earlier example, when I increased, when I increased, uh, um, in an objective coefficient, right? The profit has increased by something. Uh, the objective value has increased. And, right, by, by uh, whatever increase here, 10 times the value of the variable, if it, the optimal solution stays the same. And when I decreased, the, for a decrease, there was a decrease here in the profit, right? Uh, I hope, uh, I considered only the, the first coefficient. I hope it is clear that I could have done the same a few examples on the second coefficient. I could have said, what if the 300, the second coefficient in the objective, decreases by something or increases by something, but that still falls within the range of optimality for the second coefficient, and the analysis would be analogous, except that the changes would be related to the second variable, and there will be decrease or increase uh, related to the value of the second variable, right? So in the following episode, I, show, I will show you um, what happens uh, what can we learn from the sensitivity analysis information when you increase or decrease those the same coefficients, but you go outside of the range of optimality. So you increase above 450 or decrease below 300 or uh, outside of this, this range.